So he set to work creating a scale of notes by dividing metal into simple ratios in what we can only imagine to have been some sort of musical laboratory. Pythagoras's teaching on the natural science of notes had a profound influence on early Western music. If you've ever wondered why we have our particular set of notes to play with, well, they were chosen first by Pythagoras. And he found them by dividing pieces of metal by two-thirds. If you carry on dividing by two-thirds again and again, you create an infinite sequence or spiral of notes. Now, it's quite hard to visualize Pythagoras's endless cycle of notes, so we're going to build a spiral to show how it works, with these colored tiles representing the notes. The first note, red, is easy, because that was the note we made from our original metal bar. And that's the foundation, or the base, of our spiral. By dividing that first piece of metal by two-thirds, we were able to create a perfectly tuned new note. Call it yellow. And that goes in a bit higher up. The pitch of the sound dictates its exact position in the spiral. By dividing yellow by two-thirds, we can create a third note, higher still and further round, and so on and so forth into an infinite spiral of new notes. The mathematical distance between them makes a rather satisfying shape. With the twelfth note in position, you can see from above a pattern emerging with the notes roughly spaced around the circle of the octave. But when you get to the thirteenth note, it all goes horribly wrong, which I can show you if I collapse the model. Because the thirteenth note wants to shove the first note out of the way. This battle to occupy the same space creates a terrible and upsetting dissonance and is the result of something known as the Pythagorean comma. Pythagoras's solution was simple and ruthless to do away with the notes of 30 and upwards altogether. But the problem of the dreaded comma was even graver than Pythagoras had imagined. It didn't just affect the 13th note, but the distance between every note in the octave. The distance between two notes is determined by tuning. To tune a note is to adjust that distance. For all the notes to work perfectly together, they would need to be tuned so they were exactly equally spaced, like the dials on a clock face. As it was, the comma shifted each note a little off-center, producing a slightly uneven pattern, which got progressively worse with each step of the spiral. To begin with, musicians played extra safe by using only the first seven notes of the spiral, which, together with the original, made up the basic eight-note scale from which the word octave derives. From the ancient Greeks right through to the Middle Ages, European music may do with the eight-step version of this Pythagorean scale. One way of keeping the troublesome comma at bay was to keep music as simple as possible, which is more or less what they did. Even as late as the 13th century, musicians were sticking to notes derived from the first few steps of the spiral, which they arranged into basic tunes playing just one note at a time. In any case, much of it was popular music, made by bands of bawdy buskers thrashing out simple but joyous tunes to the rhythm of a merry drum. Mm -hmm. 